Maddie, Holly Carruthers, and Ashley Kreft. They are founders of Charlotte Black Owned, along with Jeffrey Carruthers and Jeremy Kirabin. And they did this during the height of the COVID-19 pandemic. Today, CBO's mission is to support and stabilize Black-owned um, creatives and service providers to larger brands and to help companies interact authentically with diverse audiences. So that's the, that's the boilerplate. They're going to tell you a lot more about what they do, but here's what I want you to remember or think about as you go in. When the pandemic hit and nobody knew what to do, they stepped up. We say often that charlatans, whether you're a charlatan or not, is whether you dive in and you get your uniform dirty. And our two speakers and their two colleagues did just that. They wanted to help black and brown owned businesses not only survive, but thrive. And when the pandemic was over, they could have easily called it quits. But they are working harder and smarter today than they were then. They're gonna take us on a journey this morning. I want you to, if you had at your seat a blue and a red card, I want you to grab those because this talk is interactive. Now I'd like to introduce to the stage, Maddie and Ashley. Come on up guys. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. I am Ashley. I am one of the co-owners of Charlotte Black Owned. And I'm Maddie, and I'm another one. <laughs> and today, we're not really here to talk about us. We're going to talk about Megan. And Megan is a local business owner in Charlotte. So Megan, courtesy of stock images, OK? <laughs> Megan is a fictional character, but today we want you to go along her journey and treat her like she is real. So. For this journey we're taking, Megan is 39 years old, so she's an adult. She's been an adult for some years. Um, she owns a popular catering company um, and a ghost kitchen concept. She currently works a nine to five, which is very common of a lot of business owners or creative entrepreneurs, in addition to her business, and she hopes to open a restaurant one day. Okay, y'all with us? Yep. Okay. And it is an interactive experience and journey. So when you came in, you had a red and blue card on your seat. We're going to have you all choose her path throughout her business journey over the next two years. So we'll have points where we stop and you can raise either the red or green card to decide which path she should take as a business owner. So her journey is going to start in March of 2022. As Maddie said, she's been a caterer, she's been working at home, but her goal is to expand one day and have her own restaurant. So she wants to take baby steps and she's trying to decide if she should stay as a home caterer or if she should look into a commercial kitchen space with a ghost kitchen. Of course, there's risk with either option. If she stays at home, she has the convenience of working from home, working her own hours, but she does need to make sure that her home is up to the standards to be able to cook, have the certification, make sure she has the right ventilation system. So she would have to pay about $1,000 to do that. Or she can go with the ghost kitchen option that would be fully equipped, but there are limited hours, there's a monthly fee, and it would be about $300 a month. So based on that information, decide, do you think she should continue as a home chef knowing that she'll have to pay that $1,000 fee, or should she venture off to a ghost kitchen? We're gonna give you about 10 seconds to raise your cards, and we'll go from there. Oh, it's a good mix of colors. We thought it would lean towards one side. Okay, I'm going to walk around and choose someone to see why they chose the option they did. I'm sorry. <laughs> All right. <laughs> okay, what's your name and would you mind sharing why you chose that path? My name is Shafali Patel and I think I chose the red um, maybe the convenience of being at home, you could work on it when you're, you know, ready to do it. And um, going to an outside kitchen, you'd be packing it up, bringing it on, cleaning, and back and forth. Mm -hmm. Okay. That is a great observation and choice. I'm going to go around to someone who has the other color. Well, maybe not fully around, but I'll come right here. <laughs> Your name and why did you choose this option as well? My name is Harvey. And I chose, I chose the blue option because I don't want to be liable. So I'd rather, 
I'd rather burn somebody else's kitchen in my kitchen. <laughs> good, good point, good yes, point. Yes, both good points were made. So unfortunately, Megan was not able to continue her journey at home because she is a renter. And the landlord said, we, you can't keep doing business at home. Mm -hmm. So unfortunately, she did have to venture off to the commercial kitchen. <laughs> because in life, even though we presented two options, you know, sometimes you don't really always get to choose. All right, so moving on to Megan's next decision. So we want y'all to become Megan in these moments, yes. okay? So everybody <laughs> breathe in, I am <laughs> Megan, okay? <laughs> All right, so one thing that business owners and creative entrepreneurs always want is more funding because mm -hmm. more money equals more resources, more resources equals more people you can touch, more mm -hmm. things you can do. So Megan, she wants something, she's been in business four years, so she's doing her thing, she's an adult, we already discussed that, and she wants to fund $10,000. So your options this time are whether she should apply for a $10,000 business loan, or if she should try to crowdfund. All right, so red for a business loan, blue for crowdfund. And remember, there's risk either way. Crowdfunding, you may not be able to get the full 10,000. If you could do a loan, you know you're gonna have to pay it back with interest. So those are the risk involved. All right, so I'm seeing a lot of blue crowdfunding cards. Oh. So we're gonna go to the crowdfunding slide with the blue. All right, so here's what happened. So <laughs> Megan decided to launch a crowdfunding campaign. And one thing about the community is we love to save a business, mm -hmm. okay? If a business is at risk of closure, the community will typically rally. But it's something about wanting to take the next step that sometimes people don't see it the same way. So a news station shared her story and a lot of the feedback was, you're a business owner, why don't you just work harder? Why would we give you money when businesses are supposed to make money? So um, she reached out to yours truly. Charlotte Black owned. Charlotte Black owned and we shared her story. She didn't end up raising her full 10,000 but she did make $7,000. So it's a win for Megan. Megan mm -hmm. is taking some punches but she's getting back up. And we're gonna continue through her journey. So she has a little bit of extra funding. She's in her commercial kitchen space and an amazing opportunity comes her way for a food festival, which we know comes around often. It's kind of similar to maybe the Charleston Wine and Food Festival. It's about five days. They're gonna bring on five different chefs. They told her you can make $30,000. She's completed several interviews and she's deciding now, should she take that opportunity? If you think Megan should take it, let's do it with the red. If you think, let's hold off, we can do the blue choice. Now keep in mind, Megan does have a nine to five. Yes. Okay? So she, have, she would have to take a week off of work. Yes. So there are some risks. But no risk, no reward, it looks like. Everybody okay. is saying she needs to go for it. Take it, take <laughs> it. And Megan is on board and Megan is proactive. So after the interview, she already went, she took the week off mm -hmm. for her job to prepare. And life happened. Unfortunately, they Megan said, sorry, email. Megan, our budget has changed. We have to limit the chefs we have. We're gonna bring it down to two, and we're only gonna do it three days. So we love you, we think you're a great chef, but this is not the opportunity for you. But next year, <laughs> Megan, next year. Yeah, maybe. But because of her publicity, when she was crowdfunding, her exposure with Charlotte Black owned, another opportunity happened to come along during the same week that she took off, thankfully, a wedding. So it wasn't exactly $30,000, she made 4,000, but with expenses, with staff, with the cost of food, she only took home about $2,000. But every little win counts. Mm -hmm. It's a far cry from 30, but Megan will yes. take two. <laughs> All right, so the next thing that Megan does is she's been in business five years at this point. Mm -hmm. It is January 2024, okay? Mm -hmm. The pandemic has technically ended. People are spending more. Megan's name is out there. She's getting consistent bookings. And we know that in Charlotte, there are a lot of opportunities for business owners. Mm -hmm. And so she decides to apply for a grant offered through the city of Charlotte or similar organization. Um, and so she decides if she wants to move into a food truck and take it slow, or if she wants to go for the gold and ask for around $90,000 to open a fast food carryout spot. 
Now, Megan does meet the criteria, okay? She's been in business four years. She meets the minimum revenue, and so you guys decide which grants she should apply for. Red for a food truck or blue for a carryout spot? Interesting. Let's see, does anyone want to say why they chose red? Oh, <laughs> well, I chose red because it's less expensive and I don't like trucks. <laughs> Okay. A great reason. Anyone chose blue? That's Let me see high. if I can find a blue back yeah, here. Did anybody us, choose Ashley. blue? Okay. What's your name and why did you choose blue? Uh, my name is Tim and I chose blue because uh, there's something um, I think really like solidifying about having a specific space rather than something that moves around mm -hmm. because a food truck probably comes with a lot of uh, extra work and publicizing and making sure that you're at different events that have crowds versus mm -hmm. like a specific mm -hmm. Okay, good points, good points. Can I say something? Sure. I didn't talk at all because I feel like you okay. mm. um, budget because it may not be the right time to scale for Megan to go into a fast food business. And my name is Valencia and I'm a business coach and consultant. I just don't <laughs> we and we love we can tell we appreciate your advice. Listen, Valencia said <laughs> I know what I'm talking about, okay? <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. So we know Megan been, Megan been taking some punches, but such is life. And she gets mm -hmm. back up. Let's see what happens. Unfortunately, with this grant, your zip code matters. So the ghost kitchen that Megan was working in was in the zip code that the grant specified. But unfortunately, her primary address for her business was her home and it was two streets over. So they said, sorry, but you can move or you can figure it out. So that is the end of Megan's two year journey for now. We'll mm -hmm. give you an update later, but we're here to talk about perspective. Mm -hmm. And for us, we're social workers by education. Mm -hmm. um, and we're, woo, yeah, we love social work, yes. <laughs> um, but so we wanted to do an interactive experience. And for Charlotte Black Owned, our perspective is about black business owners here in Charlotte. And that is what we advocate for. We wanted you all, whether you were thinking about it or not, to utilize your own perspective and how you chose to answer which path she goes down. So as you think about her journey, and especially as a business owner in Charlotte or a black business owner, there are always hurdles that are faced, mm -hmm. whether it's because of lack of funding, lack of education, or just lack of knowledge about how to maneuver through things like grants or mm -hmm. loans and things of that nature. And some of what we do, aside from come and speak to people <laughs> early in the morning, um, is we find creative ways to engage Charlotte's black entrepreneurs. So we have a rule that anytime you see us at an event or hosting an event, whatever, a black owned business is making money. We never ask entrepreneurs to work for free. We don't ask them to work for exposure. Anytime you see us know that, <laughs> listen, exposure don't pay the bills. It does. But we, you know, we always make sure that what we're doing is financially supportive of the, of the entrepreneur and also increases their visibility. So we host events, we collect data around businesses, we connect them to opportunities, and we connect them to people like Valencia who can support <laughs> them in their businesses. Mm -hmm. um, and because we both have a social work background, we, we do it innately. And some of those initiatives, well, a new initiative that we're starting is called The Real Count. So mm -hmm. lately, we've seen a lot in the media, they're talking about which cities have the highest black-owned businesses. In Charlotte, it's been a lot of conversation about it about since 2020, but we don't know the real count, we don't know all the businesses, we don't know their needs. Mm -hmm. So we are starting our own database to collect all of the black owned businesses in Charlotte and surrounding areas <laughs> called the real count. And <laughs> we like to ask people to like shout out a number, but even when we started our organization in 2020, within six months, we already found out about 400 businesses. Mm -hmm. So when you think there aren't that many businesses, we wanna know exactly what that number is, who they are and what they need. So we can kind of advise organizations around what business owners say they need, not just kind of what we assume they need. 
And we want to start the count from January of 2022. Mm -hmm. And we want open and closed businesses because we want to know why did you close? What were the gaps you faced? Mm -hmm. How can we connect you to the right resources and the right people and community? So that is our goal with the real count. We do have a link that we can share with you all. Even if you're not a black owned business, we know that you know of one mm -hmm. or have heard of one. And this will be a self-reporting thing. So we want as many businesses to be able to self-report or be referred it, f so we can share with the community and beyond. And so this is our, our call to action. Mm -hmm. We're not going to pass a collection plate today, <laughs> but we are asking that you guys visit um, a link and mm -hmm. so you can submit any businesses, even if you're not sure if they black owned, maybe mm -hmm. they black owned. I don't know if they're still open. We want all of them and we'll, then we'll do the legwork behind the scenes mm -hmm. to figure out exactly what that number is, whether it's a thousand, two thousand and how we can support them. The link is in CLT is Creative's bio, and we'll also add it to ours today. We just announced it. Well, y'all are the first to publicly hear yes. it. So congratulations. <laughs> Hope you all participate. And we, Anne and their story. We love that. Thank you for the support. And we hope that we can continue supporting local businesses here in Charlotte, that you all will connect with us and partner with us in the future. So we have our contact information as well um, that will be up on the slide. Our Instagram page is at CLT Black Owned with the ED at the end. And then we also have our website available as well. It's www.cltblackowned.com. And just a little throw in pitch here as well. We just opened our own creative hub. It's called the Creative Hub by Charlotte Black Owned for all creatives to call home. So whether you're a photographer, podcaster, content creator, if you just need to get out of the house to create and have a space where you feel comfortable, the Creative Hub is the most affordable place in Charlotte to do that as well. We did the so, research. Yes, so we hope you all will visit us there. And does anybody want to know how Megan's journey ended? Because we love to know conclusions <laughs> personally. So this is our contact information first for you all. Um, our website, email, and Instagram page. And Instagram is our baby. That's where we started in 2020. Just us being best friends and saying, hey, we want to do something different. Um, so that is where we started. But we always tell people, please reach out by email. That is the best way to get in touch with us. Yeah, the DMs are very full. Please <laughs> yes. email us. <laughs> yes. um, but OK, so let's talk about Megan's journey. Although we don't know the mm -hmm. end of Megan's journey because it's still happening, mm -hmm. at this point, Megan got to leave her nine to five and go full time into her business. Woo! But there, she did experience some sacrifice. Mm -hmm. So in order to do that, she decided to downsize some of her own expenses. So she moved in with her sister. So they're mm -hmm. roommates now in Charlotte and she's able to focus on her business full time. Mm -hmm. She also hired two full-time employees. Mm -hmm. She's still at the ghost kitchen and still plans to become a restaurant owner one day. And that concludes our presentation, but we would love to have Q&A with everyone. We're very interactive, conversational people. So we'll open up the floor to questions. Um, I work for a nonprofit and the first thing that my mine went to was like, I have like seven people I should tell about this to start <laughs> tracking the count. Mm -hmm. yes. um, I want to know, are you looking for only official businesses? Nope. Okay, because we, I, I work with young adults and yeah. there's a lot of young students who are like, yeah, I'm in school, but I also have this side business and they're not yeah. like necessarily DBAs, yeah. right? Yeah. So, okay, we wanted to know. We that a business. Yes. Perfect, perfect, And hopefully Thank we you. can guide them to an LLC yes. eventually. Yes, that's always the goal. Thank yeah. you. Okay, I have one uh, here. Hello, ladies. Hi. Ella from the Village Pottery Studio. Hi. So Megan's story is similar to mine. Um, my question is, I saw that you, we can sign up as black owned businesses to participate in your services. Mm -hmm. um, so if we're coming to you, mm -hmm. will you, is it a program or um, one on one coaching or just how does it work to help us elevate, gain exposure, and just kind of move our businesses? Um, it kind of depends on what the need is. So Ashley and I are not business coaches. We are connectors, community engagers. So what we do is if you come with us and say, I don't know, I need a 200 pound pig. We don't have one, but we will find someone who does or we may know someone who owns a farm that can point you in the right direction. So we tell business owners we support them 
it's not always direct, sometimes it is, but we will find a person in our network that can give you what you need. So I've got a proxy question from a member of the audience. Are you guys gonna separate the businesses, like the brick and mortar from the services yes. at some point? Yes, yes. Okay. So we'll separate based on the business structure, based on whether it's a full-time business or a side hustle, whether they have a brick and mortar and where they are in Charlotte or surrounding areas. So if you got Rock Hill, Concord, Huntersville, Charlotte metro area, we'll include those as well. Sounds great. And like Maddie said, we are going to verify it too. So we're going to do a call-a-thon to make sure we know specifically which categories each business falls under. I think we got time for you know two or three more questions. So here we go. Where is the Creative Hub located? Where the creatives can come and to work? Where is it exactly? So the Creative Hub, I think it's considered South End Dilworth area. I don't know if you all are familiar with Sunflower Bakery off East Boulevard. But it's a few houses down, or Ty, what is it called? Ty Taste. I'm very directionally challenged, and I'm from Charlotte, so I apologize. That's why I look to Maddie. But yes, we're on East Boulevard. And if you uh, come see us after, we can give you the exact address. OK, I got one here. I know you guys said that you're a um, community of resources, but do you partner with other companies that can make an impact in those entrepreneurs and small business owners' lives? Absolutely. Okay. We are big advocates for collaboration amongst businesses and individuals. Oh, please, no, stop. Um, so uh, is there an avenue, like you just said that you collaborate with other businesses, is there a way for businesses through your program to help maybe start or sponsor some people going through the Creative Hub so that they feel like there's even less of a barrier to being in the room? That is a great question. Thank you for asking. Um, so Ashley and I, we like to call ourselves the Big Idea Girls. So at any time, we have about 700 projects happening at the same time. So one, we are looking into from after we finish the count, which will be completed at the end of May because we want to give people time to you know, putting their information, and then we have some research on the back end to do. We do want to start a mentorship for business owners that are willing to support, whether financially or just through their time or, you know, treasure other business owners. Um, and then also, if you have an idea, we will say yes. So please email us, and you're like, hey, I want to do artisanal basket weaving with black-owned businesses. We will find a way to make it happen. So please come, yes, let's be friends. Y'all give it up for Madeline Holly Carruthers and Sh Ashley Kreft from Charlotte Black Owned. Thank you so much.